So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the panel on the dangers and pitfalls of nuclear power, <coughs> connecting the dots among nuclear power, nuclear weapons, and war. Uh, I'm Pat Hines, um, retired professor of environmental health and uh, director of the Trap Rock Center for Peace and Justice. Good. Good. Welcome, welcome to the panel. We're just there's also some filming going on, which is. Uh, My name is Gail. Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> And we're going to go around also, introduce before we speak. So our speakers today are uh, Hattie Nessel, who <coughs> has been working full time to shut down the Vernon nuclear power plant, it's Vermont Yankee, and all nuclear power in the United States for 10 years. Uh, Henry Rosenberg is a primary, to, to my left, a primary care physician in Northampton, Massachusetts, and he is a member of the Physicians for Social Responsibility. And to my right is Alice Slater, and she is the New York Director of the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation and represents the organization at the United Nations. She will speak, Alice will speak on the linkages the inextricable linkages between nuclear power and nuclear weapons. Hattie will give an overview of nuclear power, sort of tutorial, as well as focus on uh, the Vernon, Vermont Yankee plant. And, and Henry will speak on the health effects of exposure to radiation from nuclear power. So um, we have till, let's see, six till seven, Seven o'clock, I believe, right. an hour. Oh, really? So we yeah. start? Yes, so we need to start. Hattie, Hattie has um, a 30 minute PowerPoint presentation after which Henry will speak, add to it, uh, supplement it with the health effects of radiation exposure, and Alice will speak after that. Now, is 10 minutes okay for you, Henry? And, uh, okay. So before we start, just we'll go around briefly who you are. Pitfalls and dangers of nuclear power. Um, making our way to a carbon-free, nuclear-free future. The both of them, carbon-free and nuclear-free. That's essential. There are uh, 104 nuclear power plants in the United States. The preponderance are on the uh, east side of the United States. Every nuclear power plant routinely releases radiation 24/7. All radiation is uh, harmful. There's no level beneath which it can be deemed safe and it's cumulative in our bodies. Um, these are the red dots are the earthquakes uh, in the past four months. This was made 3-15-2011 after Fukushima. And the large red dots are the 15 highest magnitude earthquakes in U.S. history. So earthquakes are a big deal um, danger. Uh, this is Vermont Yankee, sits right on the border of Massachusetts, uh, 50 miles from Boston, which is the capital of Massachusetts, of course, and 100 miles from Montpelier. If there was a meltdown, Boston would have to be evacuated. There's no doubt about that. And it's also next to the uh, water supply of Boston, which is in the Quabbin Reservoir. Uh, this is Vermont Yankee. The white uh, part of the building there is the radioactive spent fuel pool, and we heard about how dangerous that was in Fukushima. That's what really caused the meltdowns. And um, uh, in the background are the two banks of cooling towers, uh, uh, which are supposed to cool the water, and you see all the venting going up the clouds there. Um, and that is because it is trying to reduce the thermally hot water that's going back into the Connecticut River. Uh, they take in six, uh, 543 million gallons of water a day. Much of that goes up as vent or um, leaks. And uh, a huge percent of it doesn't ever go back into the river. Um, US reactors generated about 65,000 metric tons of spent fuel by the end of 2010. This is according to Public Citizen. 75% is stored in uh, spent fuel pools because there's no national repository on site at every reactor. No mines, no reactors, no dumps. This is the black original, aboriginal hand on the radioactive symbol. The uh, uh, 
three quarters of uranium mining is on native and aboriginal lands and it's very toxic and it's contaminating them giving them all kinds of cancers and birth defects and, and early deaths uh, again we want to respect the indigenous people who say leave the uranium in the ground that's what we have to know if you know this is a human rights issue uh, nuclear power and nuclear weapons and uh, Alice will be speaking about that but an average nuclear power plant equals about a thousand times as much long-lived radioactivity as was released by the Hiroshima bomb. The amount of radioactive cesium, which is very dangerous to the soft tissue, the muscles, the heart, um, ejected by the Fukushima reactor meltdowns is 168 times higher than that emitted in the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. So this is really a weapon of mass destruction from the beginning to the end of its uh, life cycle. Uh, this is where we began our activism at Vermont Yankee. These are two people in my affinity group that we are labeling Vermont Yankee a weapon of mass destruction. That's over their sign, uh, Entergy. Um, the Obama administration now, this is uh, not quite current because they were offering $8.8 .8 billion in loan guarantees, but now they've given them to two reactors to begin uh, being built in Georgia. Um, the Bush administration had allocated 18.5 billion and the Obama administration has uh, uh, given, uh, has promised 54.5 billion, three times what the Bush administration uh, had done. And that's all taxpayer money. There's no private money going to nuclear power. The nuclear industry lobbying, you can see how it's gone up and I don't have anything past 2008 but you see at the end how far it goes up because that's an election year. So right now you can imagine it's sky high, the lobbying for nuclear power, sky high. Uh, this was from Time Magazine. This is Obama uh, with a Joe Klein article saying we need solar, we need wind, but we cannot be with, and we need clean coal and we cannot be without nuclear to uh, meet our carbon uh, standards. So um, this is in the middle of Time magazine and there was no refuting this uh, opinion piece. This is us at Vermont Yankee, Stop Taxpayer Subsidies for Vermont Yankee. That's our affinity group, that's Vermont Yankee in the background. Every time we're on the driveway, we are arrested. This is the compensation from J. Wayne Leonard, 27.32 million. He's the CEO of Entergy, which owns five nuclear power plants. 27.32 million dollars a year is his salary, and that's significant. And you can't get a better haircut than that. <laughs> <laughs> no nukes, no coal, no kidding. We have handouts here that everybody should please get before you leave. It's three color paper right there. Um, and this is from nears.org. That's one of the websites I recommend. They're very good. Um, and everybody should have a nuke watch too, by the way. Um, no nukes, no coal, no kidding. We don't want to say no nukes and coal's okay, and we don't want to say coal, uh, no coal and nukes are okay. We want to say no fossil and no car, uh, nukes. This is the historic crossover. The source is NC Warren, North Carolina Warren. John Blackburn and Sam Cunningham did this. Um, John Blackburn was the chancellor of Duke University and an economist, and he volunteered for NC Warren and created this chart. And what it, it's, it, it's part of a large study, but it, it shows where solar is going down in price and nuclear is going up in price. Those trends will continue. And in 2010, in the summer of 2010, there was a historic crossover where solar became cheaper than nuclear in real money, whether it's taxpayer or wherever it's coming from. And that's about a 50-some page report. And what he came up with, what they came up with, was that North Carolina was very close to being 100%. It was like 94% they could go with renewables. That was the study. Uh, solar is the solution. Solar panels sold equaled in 2010 17 nuclear power plants and the cost of solar went in three years from three four dollars and twenty cents a watt to a dollar twenty in three years so if anybody says solar is too expensive in real money it's not uh, and so we went to uh, Vermont Yankee with the go solar uh, placards that we had people talk about jobs you know when they really want to get us they talk about jobs well for a million dollars you get 4.2 jobs in nuclear 13 in solar and uh, wind and then more in other 
renewable industry. So there's no argument to be made there. Uh, this is from a 1979 book, Health Issues. First we have to convince the people that good health isn't everything. These things are really dangerous and um, there is no safe nuclear power in terms of our bodies and the life on Earth and we cannot live on a radioactive planet. Um, so this is what ionizing radiation, which comes out of the nuclear power plant 24-7, uh, does to our bodies in iodine and you hear all these numbers and all these tritium and cesium and strontium and so they all go to different parts Where of our body. Somebody made that. Oh. Somebody drew it. Can you, can you get it? From me you can get it. I have it on my computer. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is from the John Goffman book and the cows eat the grass where the rain has come down with strontium-90 in it and the strontium-90 is then passed on in their milk and I put a fish up there because the uh, uh, Vermont Yankee is emitting strontium-90 into the river and the fish are being tested positive for strontium-90 in their bones and in their flesh. So I wanted to include the fish along with the cow. This is a cooling tower collapse at Vermont Yankee and this shows the wood deteriorated to the extent that it collapsed and you know tens of thousands of uh, thermally hot water. It's not particularly radioactive water but that's the kind of deferred maintenance that's going on there. So it collapsed in uh, uh, 2007 and it collapsed again in the next year uh, because they defer maintenance because it's never cost effective to them. This is another leak so when they're talking about leaks at nuclear power plants that's what it might look like. This is a fire at Vermont Yankee which is a transformer fire and uh, all of these pictures, by the way, that I've just shown you were taken by whistleblowers. We have no idea who took these pictures because no reporters were allowed on site when this happened. Uh, these are radioactive tritium leaks. Every dot, every red dot there is a tritium leak. The uh, permissible level, which doesn't mean safe, you have to distinguish between permissible and safe. Doesn't mean safe. The permissible level according to the federal government and some states are lowering that, particularly California, um, is 20,000 picocuries per liter of water. This, uh, these uh, red dots were showing um, a mil uh, 2.5 million picocuries per liter. The NRC did nothing. They never said you have to stop uh, uh, working in order to find the leaks and fix the leaks. They didn't find them for negligence, nothing. And they just continued leaking. Because they're all under the reactor. They don't want to go under and find them. They've never inspected them and they just happened to get caught by a whistleblower again telling us that there was a leak. Um, so we went there yeah. on January 1st, 2011 with the sign, no more leaks and lies, shut it down now. That's the energy sign in the background. Um, the Senate up there in Vermont took it unto themselves to decide whether or not Vermont Yankee could be relicensed and they voted 26 to 4. It's a phenomenal vote by a Senate against a 20-year license extension. Um, within uh, 10 days of Fukushima, the NRC relicensed Vermont Yankee, uh, overriding the Democratic vote of the legislature. Uh, this is Dr. Hermann Scheer. He's on the list there of uh, recommended reading. He was in the German parliament for 30 years doing um, uh, feed-in tariffs, getting an equal playing field for the new renewable in, uh, uh, industries like solar and wind. So he's a very important person to read um, and he got the German uh, country really very far advanced with renewable energies. So uh, after Fukushima, in, uh, in contrast to the uh, United States which the NRC not only relicensed um, Vermont Yankee, it relicensed three uh, in Arizona. It has relicensed 72 out of 72 of the nuclear power reactors um, up to date, you know, this time. Um, they, in other words, it's a rubber, they, they've never refused any nuclear power. Uh, they're relicensing for 20 years and of course Germany Chancellor said we're going to abandon nuclear power by 2022. This is May 30th, very shortly after Fukushima. They renounced nuclear power and she immediately had shut down eight of the oldest and that is because of demonstrations. So there we are. 250,000 people demonstrate in Cologne and that's March 26. That's within what two weeks of Fukushima. They could get 250,000 people out there. So this is significant. This is really a significant grassroots movement. 
Uh, on top of them. Yeah. That's true. So they will That's true. Yes. That's they really know what what nuclear power is about. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Siemens abandoned nuclear power. This was in the New York Times, September 18th. The chapter for us is closed, said the CEO. He emphasized the company's commitment to the rapidly growing renewable energy sector. This is a very good uh, turn of events because they're a major. Uh, largest engineering conglomerate in Europe and they've been making parts and whatever for nuclear power. So Alice Stewart's one of my favorite people in the whole world. Um, uh, next to Alice Slater maybe. How's that? <laughs> um, and she did groundbreaking work on the effects of low-level radiation. So please read her. She's on the bibliography that I created there. John Goffman is also on the bibliography. He worked on the Manhattan Project and because uh, to a large degree of Alice Stewart's work and others, he uh, came to his senses about nuclear power. He got fired from Lawrence Livermore Lab and devoted the rest of his life to uh, opposing nuclear power. And a lot of the cartoons here are from his first book. Uh, uh, what's it, what was it called, the, uh, his organization? Uh, something about yeah. nuclear responsibility. Uh, so, Committee for Nuclear Responsibility, I think. So this is one of his... Um, uh, cartoons and that's the NRC, the watchdog in there. And our watchdog, actual watchdog, who's fabulous, is our Massachusetts representative Ed Markey, who says that the NRC regulations demonstrate that flawed assumptions, underestimation of safety risks, are currently an inherent part of the NRC regulatory program. So we have actually no regulatory program. There's nothing there between us and that reactor. There's nothing. They would not do anything to cost them more money because it would cost them their jobs. It's all about money and jobs. The unsolved waste problem, nuclear waste problem, I don't know about you, but I don't want my kids growing up in a world where there aren't any problems left to solve. That's, a, again, from the Goffman book. I mean, this is not news, you know. This is 30-some years old. Um, Chernobyl, this, a million deaths are attributable to the Chernobyl cast catastrophe, and that book is also on your a bibliography there. So, um, and that shows how many miles out you still can't eat the meat and dairy and all that kind of, and that's the dead zone. So if it was Vermont Yankee, was a Chernobyl, that would be the dead zone. What, what is the dead zone? The dead zone people can't live. No, I know okay. how, how big. 15. It's no, it's 19 miles in every direction. 19. 19 miles in every direction, which is a huge number of thousands of acres. Some, uh, I forget, Vermont. Vermont. Uh, Vermont. Well, it depends, yeah, it depends in exactly. In New York, we have 22 million people. Right. Oh, the Indian Point. Right. Yeah. Okay, we've got to keep going here. i got a watchdog watching me. Uh, anything exciting happen at the nuclear power plant today? People talk about the workers. What are you going to do about the workers? They should not be working at a nuclear power plant. It's not safe for them. So if we care about the workers, we really uh, don't want them. We, you know, we need to decommission these places and end the industry. Uh, this is uh, um, the Greenpeace blimp. It says shut down from my Yankee on it. And the showing of this is to show that it's totally legal what they're doing, flying that close to a nuclear power plant. There's not a no-fly zone that protects the plant. Uh, these, this is Fukushima, lessons to be learned, there's no safe nuclear power, exploded, exploded, exploded on fire. And this uh, photograph came out March 16, 2011. Ten days after this photograph, the Boston Globe's editorial said, no problem, we've averted the worst case scenario of Fukushima. That's after this photograph was online. So it was saying, don't worry, the nuclear industry is fine, NRC relicenses them, and you know, it's like just a real whitewash of the whole thing. And again, this is a, a demonstration in Tokyo in sep September. 60,000 people have demonstrated. They've got 5 million people signed on to a petition now, and they're going for uh, 10 million people to sign on to a petition. Where's um, uh, Japan. 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 Japan's, out of 54 nuclear power plants in Japan, 52 were shut down. And they're going, the other two will be shut down by April. They and there's no, there's no rolling blackouts that I have heard from the Japanese people that have been coming oh, over. Really? Yeah. That's so what that. me worry? Yes, me worry. Nuclear power is dangerous. And that is, we should be worried about it. 
Uh, what to do? Subsidize energy efficiency and renewables. No subsidies for nuclear power or fossil fuels. The good news is, say it together, we yes. can do it. Yes. Going nuclear free and carbon free. This is in Massachusetts where we have a very good Green Communities Grant lo Loan Program up to $10 million a year for qualifying communities and that's happening in Massachusetts big time. We're having lots of things going on with energy. Physicians for Social Responsibility which is Henry's domain there. Nationwide calls for a nationwide moratorium on new nuclear reactors in the United States and a suspension of operations at the nuclear reactors with a similar design as those involved in the disaster in Japan, as well as those on fault lines. There need, none of our reactors are up to code for the kind of earthquakes that are going on. None of them. Uh, this is our affinity group, June 30th, 2011, when the three women in the middle and the front are all over 90. 90, 92, and 94. Beautiful slide to finish on. So that we can That's the end. Yeah. Where am I? Oh, he is a, a practicing physician in Northampton, but a member of the Physicians for Social Responsibility. Can you just move a little bit? Here? And, and, and sure. he'll be speaking on the risks of exposure to radiation. <clears throat> Thank you. Human cells have a system for repairing radiation damage, and that shouldn't be surprising because human beings are naturally exposed to radiation and always have been. Um, we're exposed to radioactive isotopes in vegetable matter. You might remember that right after the Fukushima accident there was a whole lot of attention um, to radioactive bananas, which sounds like a joke, but it's true. Bananas have among the highest levels of natural radiation in the plant kingdom because they contain potassium including a very slightly radioactive form called K40. Don't worry about the bananas. And if you live in a wooden house, you're exposed to radiation from the timbers. If you live in a stone house, you're exposed to much higher levels of radiation from rocks. And whatever kind of house you live in, you might want to pay the $70 or so to pay to get a, uh, a kit to find out if you're being exposed to naturally occurring radon and if you are, you can take some simple steps to lower that, that risk. Some of the radiation that we're all exposed to every day comes from outside of our world. 10 or 15 percent of background radiation comes from so-called cosmic rays. These include protons, or hydrogen nuclei, alpha particles, or helium nuclei, and beta particles, or electrons. And when these high energy particles reach our atmosphere, they also interact with various elements to produce gamma rays, which are like x-rays. Um, all these natural processes have effects on our machines. They say one error per month per 256 megabytes of RAM and on our bodies. And we receive an average of between 2.4 and 3 millisieverts per year in natural background radiation, even when we're here at the Hilton. And for those of us who live at high altitudes, we get more. Those of us who do a lot of air travel get more. And we live in a world where just a few decades ago, people were producing open air nuclear explosions. And also there have been major leaks at places like Chernobyl and Fukushima. Um, and because of that, the background radiation that we're all exposed to is somewhat higher than it was for most of evolution. But there was, there was never a time when human cells were safe from radiation. The problem with our cell's repair system is that it's imperfect and it's easily overwhelmed. Ionizing radiation is radiation which has sufficient energy to turn an atom into an ion. That is, to leave it with a positive or a negative charge, which can then damage complex molecules like DNA. Radiation takes different forms. Gamma rays are like light, waves of energy, but much higher energy than what's coming out of these light fixtures. It is a form of radiation which can penetrate deeply into the body and can have medical consequences in many organ systems. It's fair to compare exposure to gamma rays to medical x-rays. Background gamma irradiation at sea level amounts to about one or two millisieverts per year. A chest x-ray would expose a person to an additional six one-hundredths of a millisievert. A chest CAT scan might give as much as five or even eight millisieverts 
and a worker in a nuclear plant might be exposed to 19 millisieverts per year. Beta irradiation is a stream of electrons much less penetrating than gamma rays, and even ordinary clothing gives some protection. And alpha rays, which are commonly emitted by large radioactive nuclei like uranium, are the equivalent of helium nuclei, two protons and two neutrons, and as particles go, that's big. So big that alpha radiation can be stopped by a piece of paper. A stream of alpha particles might burn your skin, but it won't penetrate your skin to reach other body parts. Check your smoke detector when you get home. You might find that it's the kind that releases a steady stream of alpha particles from americium. And don't worry, I don't think your smoke detector is hurting you. But the problem is that if you eat or drink something that contains an alpha emitter, or if it enters your body through a wound, or if you breathe it in, then the particles can lodge in your bones or in your lung, and they can stay there for years, directly irradiating your marrow or your bronchi. People will try to reassure you by comparing the radiation levels to chest x-rays or CAT scans. But in the case of alpha emitters, that's not a fair comparison. Those comparisons are meaningless. What's important is what's happening locally inside the affected organ. That form of radiation is not detected by a Geiger counter. And once the body is contaminated internally with alpha emitters, there is no way to decontaminate it. People often ask what level of radiation is safe and efforts have been made to define safe levels for workers in nuclear plants, safe levels for the public outside the plant, safe levels for children and pregnant women who have particular vulnerabilities to radiation. And as Hattie said, the conclusion has always been the same. There is no threshold. There is no dose below which exposure is safe. Higher exposure levels bring higher risks, but no level of radiation is so low that it brings no risk. The tragic source of most of our information on radiation's effects on humans is what happened in 1945 in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And scientists have been able to estimate doses that different individuals received and calculated the risk of leukemia and other cancers. As the exposure level goes down, the risk goes down. But it never goes down to background risk. The so-called BEAR subcommittee, the Biological Effects of Ionizing Radiation Subcommittee of the U.S. National Institute of Science, uses an evolving model with information from the atomic bombs and also from many other sources. And the most accurate model, according to BEAR, is linear and non-threshold. That is, cancer risk, one, is directly proportional to radiation dose, two, is cumulative, and three, does not respect any minimum dose threshold. And nothing that I've told you isn't well known to the engineers who build and operate nuclear power plants. And certainly, they take precautions to prevent catastrophic releases of radiation. But accidents happen, usually not because of a single problem, but because of a combination of problems all lined up. At Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania, in 1979, a relief valve got stuck in the open position, allowing vital coolant to escape. Because of a design flaw, a warning light on the control panel was hard to see. The next problem was an ingredient that seems to be present in every major nuclear accident, human error. In trying to respond to the stuck valve, the operators made the problem worse. In the end, a full-blown catastrophe was averted, but only after 40,000 gallons of contaminated water were intentionally released into the Susquehanna River. 1986, in Chernobyl, Ukraine, there was a sudden power surge during a full power test of one of the reactors. A failed attempt to shut the plant down led to a more extreme power spike, rupture of the reactor vessel, and fire in the graphite moderator, which was needed to control the nuclear reaction. And you know what happened, a radioactive plume over much of Europe. Scientists disagree about how many cases of cancer were caused by the Chernobyl accident. And Hattie quoted a pretty high estimate. It's all controversial. But at the low end, the Union of Concerned Scientists estimates that there will have been 50,000 excess cases of cancer, half of them fatal. And of course, not a single one of those cases comes with a label reading made in Chernobyl. And the vast majority of people who were under that plume did not develop cancer. Then a year ago, a magnitude 9 earthquake overwhelmed the safety systems at Fukushima. Radioactive emissions were detected 14 minutes after the quake which was 55 minutes before the tsunami. 
The tsunami, of course, made a bad situation worse. Without electricity to power the cooling system, water quickly boiled off. And to prevent an explosion like what happened at Chernobyl, the utility intentionally vented steam contaminated with iodine-131 and cesium-137. Every day seemed to bring new complications, explosions, fires, and further intentional ventings. During the first week after the earthquake, the International Atomic Energy Agency and the French Institute for Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety both found radiation levels around the plant of 1,930 sieverts per hour. We were talking about millisieverts. And so this is over 6,000 times normal background radiation. And which isotopes contaminated the land and the air and the sea? Lots of isotopes. Plutonium-238, a strong alpha emitter, um, various isotopes of strontium, a beta, a beta emitter, which was found as far as 79 kilometers, or a little under 50 miles from the plant. Iodine-131, a beta and gamma emitter, which made its way into drinking water, vegetables, cow's milk, and human milk. And cesium-137, which accumulates in the bladder from where it can irradiate the pelvis with uh, beta particles and indirectly with gamma rays. Cesium was found in plants, in firewood, in rice, and in drinking water. Radioactivity found its way into supermarkets, in rice, in beef from cattle fed contaminated straw, and in one incident you may have heard of in green tea that made its way to France. Half of Japan's seafood comes from the stretch of coast near Fukushima, and we know that according to the Japanese Atomic Industrial Forum, levels of iodine-131 in the sea near reactor number two were seven and a half million times the so-called safety limit right after the accident. And four months later, we're still 10,000 times baseline. You may think that accidents like this aren't likely to happen at our plants. Mm -hmm. But over the course of 32 years, these three major accidents and countless minor accidents did happen. And if it comforts you to think that at least here in the Northeast, we don't have to worry about earthquakes. Keep in mind that the Boston quake of 1755 is thought to have exceeded a magnitude of six. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has said that Indian Point, 24 and a half miles from here on the Hudson, is the most vulnerable plant because its construction did not take into account the earthquakes to which it might be exposed. Um, it is right at the intersection of two important fault lines, the Ramapo Fault and guess what? The Stamford Peekskill Line. It was built to withstand a magnitude six quake. Scientists now say we should expect a magnitude seven quake at Indian Point. And earthquakes and accidents are not the only problem. To give you an idea of scale, a large medical center comprising several hospitals and many labs using radioactive isotopes and diagnostic tests might have a total inventory of two curies of radioactive isotopes. An average nuclear power plant has 16 billion curies. We just aren't smart enough to keep that quantity of material secure. A typical reactor may take in 20,000 gallons of water per minute. That's why these plants are always by the shore or by a major river or lake. Three quarters of the water is released as steam and the remaining 5,000 gallons gets returned to the body of water. A nuclear power plant has many miles of pipes and pipes leak. And as plants age, old pipes especially leak. Even without leaks, so-called permissible levels of radioactive elements leave the plant with those thousands of gallons of water. And you will recall that there has never been shown to be a safe level of radiation, so we conclude that permissible levels are not safe levels. And radioactive fission gases are also intentionally released in so-called permissible levels. The risk of childhood leukemia is doubled within three miles of a nuclear power plant. And the risk of other childhood cancers is also significantly increased, according to a German study. And I think it was this paper that yeah. talks about several other studies, including France and the US, that show the same thing. Um, of course, most children in those communities don't get leukemia. Most children don't get cancer. We are talking about low baseline levels and we increase those levels by 60% for all childhood cancers, or if we increase the levels by over 100% for childhood leukemia, we are still talking about small numbers of children. And their cancers don't have a label attributing the disease to the nearby power plant. 
There's a fundamental principle in medicine. When there is a condition for which we have no cure, we must make every effort to prevent that condition. We have no cure for a problem like Fukushima. We have no cure for a day in and day out problem like Indian Point. That is why we must work to shut down the entire nuclear power industry and replace it not with something comparably dangerous like coal, but with something positively friendly like power from the sun. Thank you. Okay, so our next speaker is Alice Slater, and she will be speaking on the linkages between nuclear power and nuclear weapons. First, got to do the linkages between the mic and me. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. No, I don't know. Okay. Well, we're here at an anti-war conference, and the drums of war are beating once again as we read of the preparations and rehearsals for U.S. or Israeli military strike against Iran to take out its nascent bomb-making capability as Iran is asserting its legal right under the Non-Proliferation Treaty to enrich uranium from its nuclear reactors for, quote, peaceful nuclear power. As we watch the planned transformation of the Imperial U.S. military into a global strike force seeking full-spectrum dominance, its targeted assassination program now in eight countries, waged by the U.S. Chair Force raining deadly drone attacks down on unwary terrorists and innocent civilians as well, without benefit of trial, evidence, charges, even the Nazis got a trial at Nuremberg. The abhorrent willingness to wage illegal preemptive wars. We are reaping the grim whirlwind of these policies. Iran is relying on the Faustian bargain of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, which enables it to develop what is ostensibly described as peaceful nuclear technology, which would give them the capacity and materials they need to build bombs of their own as a deterrent against U.S. threats. The Non-Proliferation Treaty, signed in 1970, contained a promise by five nuclear weapon states, the U.S., Russia, U.K., France, and China, to give up their nuclear weapons if all the other countries of the world promised not to get them. And to sweeten the pot, we promised them an inalienable right to peaceful nuclear technology. I mean, just think of it, our Constitution, inalienable right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and nuclear power? Where did that come from? This has a mountain, so Right. That's, that's, that's right. the other one. Yeah. Only India, Pakistan, and Israel refused to sign, and they used the peaceful technology to develop nuclear weapons of their own. And North Korea, which had signed, pulled out of the treaty, took its peaceful technology, put it through the enrichment process, and made bombs. Now Iran has begun to legally enrich its uranium. They're allowed to enrich it up to a certain level for medical technology or as fuel in nuclear reactors. But it's very easy to just keep putting it through. That's what this whole fuss is about, you know. And it's because it's Iran. Nobody made a fuss about Israel and India and Pakistan, you know. Under the guise of peaceful nuclear power, other countries such as South Africa, Argentina, Brazil, and Libya were well on their way to developing nuclear bombs, which they later abandoned. And the former IEA director, Mohamed el Baradei, said, we just cannot do business as usual that every country can build its own factories for separating plutonium or enriching uranium. Then we are really talking about 30, 40 countries sitting on the fence with a nuclear weapons capability that could be converted into a nuclear weapon in a matter of months. Fukushima was the greatest industrial catastrophe in the history of mankind. The massive tsunami crippled the cooling systems of the reactor complex with three exposed reactors and four fuel storage pools all in, all in desperate need of being cooled. As to this day, they continue to spew their poisons into the ground, air, and water in an unprecedented meltdown. Graver than the accident in Chernobyl, which involved only one nuclear reactor, 
But even without catastrophic meltdowns like Fukushima, Chernobyl, or Three Mile Island, as we just heard, nuclear energy produces toxic environmental devastation at every step along the way in the nuclear fuel cycle, from the lethal radioactive leg legacy produced by mining uranium ore. I was out to Navajo country. I mean, they have terrible health, def children born with birth defects and uh, terrible things from the uranium tailings that are laying around on their land. Uh, it's mostly on indigenous lands, the uranium mining. To the polluted aftermath from processing uranium ore into fuel for what must be the most expensive method ever derived for boiling water to make electricity. To the vast tons of irradiated waste despoiling our planet in every community leaching their poisons into the air, water, and soil. And added to all this is perhaps the most terrifying consequences produced by nuclear power, because every nuclear reactor is a bomb factory producing the deadly material needed to make nuclear weapons. That is how all the current nuclear weapon states develop their bombs. And that is how the nuclear wannabes, like Iran and Japan, keep their options open by mastering the technology to manufacture nuclear weapons material. <coughs> Meanwhile, more than 30 countries eager to join the Old Boys Advanced Technology Club are now trying to acquire nuclear power, including the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, Turkey, Guinea, Vietnam, and Bangladesh. And that's because they learned that if they had a nuclear bomb or a capacity, we'd leave them alone like we're leaving North Korea alone. Mm -hmm. And when they don't have it, mm -hmm. you know, we're threatening them. Once they got the bomb, they got their deterrent. Mm -hmm. There are now 440 peaceful reactors in 31 countries, all producing deadly bomb materials, with 272 research reactors in 56 countries, some producing highly enriched uranium, which is bomb level. The signers of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty that finally ended nuclear testing uh, were well aware that having a nuclear reactor, a nation had been given the keys to the bomb factory because in order for that treaty to go into force, every country with a nuclear reactor has to sign it. In other words, there won't be a recognized treaty until everybody signs on, and we're not signing on, let alone others. George Tennant, the former uh, CIA director, said, the difference between producing low enriched uranium and weapons capable high enriched uranium is only a matter of time and intent, not technology. And uh, I want to get to the good news. I, c I could go on and on about that, but you get the picture. The good news, well, I do want to say that um, the IAEA, that, that the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, like our Nuclear Regulatory Commission, is totally dominated by the industry. And I was at the UN meeting where they reported on the deaths at Chernobyl where they mm -hmm. said 50 people died. Mm -hmm. And there was like a gasp from the whole audience. And they have a collusive agreement with the World Health Organization that the World Health Organization can't do any studies mm -hmm. about radiation without first vetting it with the IAEA and then, you know, making sure, and they have all kinds of statements even about food irradiation. We don't want to upset the people, you know, there's all kinds of PR to protect the industry. And, and now, there's a Fukushima cover. Oh, and I do want to say that Alexei Yablokov, who is a uh, Russian scientist that published his results with the New York Academy of Science that you said is controversial, but they collected all the Ukrainian and Russian studies after Chernobyl on the ground. I don't think it's controversial. And they found a million deaths from Chernobyl. UCS is saying 50,000. But um, it was like devastating what happened in Chernobyl. So here's the good news. In the light of Fukushima, the world's taken a time out on going full speed ahead with nuclear power. Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Spain, and Japan have announced their intention to phase out nuclear power. And Japan mm -hmm. shut down all 54 now of its nuclear power plants, which um, mm. we heard and they have yet to have a blackout because the people are conserving energy and they're moving to 
-hmm. when, and people are puzzled, like how could they shut down 54 mm -hmm. nuclear power plants? Mm -hmm. They said it was like 30 percent or something. Mm -hmm. But apparently they were producing a lot of excess power that wasn't being used, you know, it was like did I say, this wasn't said, I'm, I'm was skipping over, but I want to tell you that the radioactive waste lasts for 350,000 years. All of recorded history is 5,000 years. If that's not nuts to make one more ounce of it, when they don't know where to put it, you know, they try to bury it in a hole in the ground at Yucca Mountain, you can't figure out what's going to happen in 350,000 years. At, at the best, Advice right now is to keep it in above ground concrete casks where we can guard it. And maybe in 500 years we'll figure out something, you know, maybe string theory will find the seventh dimension and kick it up there. Or I don't know. But here's the really good news. <laughs> Kuwait pulled out last month of a contract to build four reactors. Venezuela froze all its nuclear development projects and Mexico canceled plans to build 10 reactors. This is after Fukushima. As far as abundant, sustainable energy, every 30 minutes enough of the sun's energy reaches the Earth's surface to meet global energy demands for an entire year. Wind can satisfy the world's electricity needs 40 times over and meet all global energy demands five times over. The geothermal energy stored in the top six miles of the Earth's crust contains 50,000 times the energy of the world's known oil and gas resources. Tidal wave and small hydropower can also provide vast stores of energy everywhere. In 2009, the International Renewable Energy Agency was launched and now has 187 member states. Previously, we only had the International Atomic Energy Agency, then we had the International Energy Agency that was formed after the 1973 oil crisis to address global oil supply. But IRENA's mission is to empower developing countries with the ability to access the free energy of the sun, wind, etc. And since IRENA is the Greek word for peace, this new institution is especially well named. So we already have the technology to harness the bounty of the Earth. It's clearly not beyond our financial means, but the corporate supporters of toxic fuel industries working, are working against the momentum to move to a green energy economy. They've been able to in influence government policy to continue to subsidize polluting fossil, nuclear, and industrial biomass. Let's not forget about the awful story about ethanol and industrial biomass because we are literally putting corn in our cars to drive them when people are starving. We're, in, we're, we're limiting our food supply. This is insane to burn food. Anyway, the International Energy Esti Agency estimates that the fossil fuel consumption subsidies worldwide amounted to $409 billion in 2010, up from $300 billion in 2009 six times more than the annual subsidies for, for re renewables. And the IAEA figure doesn't count the $50 billion a year it's estimated to, for the, goes to the Pentagon just to protect the oil tankers going back and forth, like the, the guard duty to bring in the oil. And um, there was, wait, I have the wrong, there was another study that I had in a different version of this, the Scientific American did a whole um, uh, analysis of nuclear subsidies like it's been hundreds of billions of dollars since the beginning. I have the wrong copy of my report that I'm reading you. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. And um, where is it? All right, well, oh, here it is. So they had this uh, report. I love the name of it. The gift that keeps giving, I think they call the report. It's a nuclear. And um, I want to finish up here, so let's see. The gift that keeps going. Okay, giving. And dis yeah, despite all, oh, and then there are reports that have come out from uh, Scientific American that we can be completely sustainable by 2030. They have a whole research report showing it. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they scenario contemplates building 3.8 million windmills and it would take less than 50 kilometers of land, smaller than the area of Manhattan, 
and they say if that sounds like a big number don't worry because we manufacture 73 million cars and trucks every year you know so it's not impossible then the world wildlife fund also did a report so did the un uh, climate change panel they said 80 percent by 2050 but world wildlife said 100 percent and scientific american said 100 percent by 2030 it's kind of like when kennedy said we're going to put a man on the moon in 10 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. If we have the commitment, if we said we're going to do it by 2030, you know, and then we took all the subsidies and gave it to solar and wind, took it away from you, we would have it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question is, what keeps it, uh, why, why, don't, why aren't we having it? Well, these fossil, these old dirty fuel industries, they don't want to lose their cash cow. Once the infrastructure is in, they can't mm -hmm. sell the sun and the winds and the geothermal. They're going to lose that constant uh, income that they have. You know, there's a lot of jobs and infrastructure, but it's not the same as selling oil all the time, you know, that's always being exhausted, or uranium, or corn. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons, and I love this uh, quote about the forces of corporate forces from Franklin Delano Roosevelt talking about how they were trying to run the country, and I just want to quote this 1936 Roosevelt, we had to struggle with the old enemies of peace, business and financial monopoly, speculation, reckless banking, class antagonism, sectionalism, war profiteering. They had begun to consider the government of the United States as a mere appendage to their own affairs. We now know that government by organized money is just as dangerous as government by organized mob. That's our FDR. And finally, Joanna Macy, this echo philosopher, describes this time as the great turning. To sh and in we have to shift the energy paradigm. If we were to do that, we'd essentially be turning away from the industrial growth society to a life-sustaining civilization, mm -hmm. foregoing this failed economic ma model which measures its performance in terms of ever-increasing corporate profits, in other words, by how fast materials can be extracted from the earth and turned into consumer products, weapons, and waste. Mm -hmm. Relying on the inexhaustible abundance of the sun, wind, tides for our energy needs and ending our dependence on the old structures, beginning with transforming the way we meet our energy needs, we may finally be able to put an end to war as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. We have just a few minutes left for the workshop, actually five minutes, so we'd welcome any comments, questions. Yes. Yeah, I, I lived in Baltimore in the 70s, and after 79, in 82, I became totally disabled, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm convinced that this low-level radiation is responsible for all these weird illnesses we're seeing now, chronic fatigue. Mm -hmm. uh, all the, I don't know if, or can't document if there's an escalation in the bone uh, problems, but I suspect that all these knee uh, operations and hip operations and replacements, this and that, are because the marrow is, is being deteriorated. Um, you know, and I think the best attack on this is to alert people to the health problems because that makes it personal. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, you know, and people don't know it. Well, I, I think it's it's not just nuclear; it's the chemical crap they yeah, carry and, that yes. the genetically modify. I mean, they're just yeah. poisoning us. You know, mm -hmm. and it's the same enemy, really. That's that's mm -hmm. the good news that we can really get together and focus on changing this corporate culture that's dominating us mm -hmm. with nuclear that's killing power sure. and chemicals and yeah. all of that. You well, know, we yeah. now have all these autoimmune diseases. We've sort of conquered bacterial diseases with antibiotics. But uh, after Lyme disease developed after Millstone had a very significant event in the 70s. We think it was Plum Island. It's actually been linked to the, uh, the biological research lab there which or both. Yeah, supports <laughs> biological warfare. It was right opposite where the Lyme disease started, yeah. Plum Island and the World Island Sand. Are there any other comments or questions? Um, I just want to mention something that the public hasn't heard about. 
among the reasons for not renewing nuclear plants. Oh, wait a minute, would you stand here and turn around? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> oh, why Can I there? put that on you? Do you want me to aim that? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, among the reasons not to re renew nuclear plants, you mentioned that the uh, pipes rust because there's this uh, liquid running mm -hmm. through them, and people can relate to that, that pipes rust. Mm -hmm. But what hasn't been explained to the public is that steel loses its strength in a radioactive environment. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, it gets brittle. And yes. that's why it gets brittle. It doesn't get strong like steel ordinarily is. Mm -hmm. And that's a strong reason not to renew after 20 years. That's the original reason they had a 20 year mm -hmm. limit. 40. That 40 year 40 years. Yeah. And then a 20 year renewal. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. I think there's been pictures of pitted, uh, pitted pipes where that has happened, and yet despite that, uh, the, the uh, plant has gotten its 20 year renewal. There was a move when the Yankee Row power plant was shut down. Um, there were people who were calling for an, an autopsy, a, a metallurgic autopsy oh, yeah. on the reactor vessel, and that was never done. It was never done. Yeah. There's all oh, the other cover-up I didn't talk about. The Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty Organization monitors radiation all over the world to make sure nobody's cheating on nuclear testing. So after Fukushima, they were getting all the plumes that were flying over the planet. You know, they, we heard about lettuce in California and milk in Vermont. And, and um, we can't get the information. I'm on the board of the Lawyers Committee for Nuclear Policy, and we filed a Freedom of Information Act. But they, the CTBTO is releasing it to governments, to the IAEA, to the WHO, but not to the public. Mm -hmm. So we should know where this radiation is going, because this is going on. Years, it's Some not of the radiation detectors in California, were, okay. they happened to be yeah. shut off at the time. Of, the EPA uh, <laughs> deliberately <laughs> shut things down. Well, well, they don't want us to. Is come. there a monitoring network that the movement is set up? No, that's not. Can we do that? Well, they're they're doing it in Japan. Little, it's not easy to do. Greenpeace uh, uh, tested fish over 500 miles from Fukushima in the ocean and they were radioactive. And but it's been found to radioactive fish in Alaska, you know. Canada. Yeah. But oh. the Japanese women, the mothers, are setting up private dosimeters they buy because That's they're... That's what I mean. Here. But I don't know yes. that we could. But well, it's possible. Chris Busby... I think uh, we should. Chris Busby, Dr. Chris Busby, low-level radiation campaign in the UK, he advocates citizen monitoring, and he has a whole program of how to do it well, uh, on it? the cheap, Chris on Busby. the website, LLRC. Org. L -L -R He's a chief advocate of a citizen-based volunteer where, monitoring. Where are you from? Program. I'm I'm in uh, I'm within probably 20 miles of Millstone oh. in Norwich, Connecticut. And I'm very concerned because I had to move there. I didn't want to want to go there, but I'm there. And I work with Helen Colcott and all the. Hampton celebrities, and we shut down the Brookhaven reactors. But we always talked about Millstone, Indian and Oyster Creek, like New York's in the target of the, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. New York Are City. you in touch with Millstone people? We were, yeah. At also, were? No, no. there's 23 reactors in the United States, none of us talked about this, that are the same GE more than one boiling water as reactor Fukushima. as Fukushima. Right. And that's what uh, Ed Markey and others Say they have to be shut down immediately. Uh, the same exact with that uh, spent fuel pool up top, and actually earthquakes came through that Vermont area exactly and went from Virginia all the way to Maine last summer. But so, what we really have yeah. to do is promote sustainable energy. Like mm -hmm. I got, I forgot to bring these Good. glossy. Um, <coughs> advertisements from Entergy, the nuclear power plant, Indian Point, showing New York in the dark, like after Fukushima, they're doing all this mailing. Now they're going to advertise on John Stewart. The Nuclear Energy Institute is buying time. I read this this week on John Stewart. We're writing to John Stewart to, to, to soften the attitude of young people that watch John Stewart towards mm -hmm. nuclear power, because they don't know what we know. You know, we've been living with them. Well, the example from Japan is the lesson there. Exactly. Fifty-four reactors shut down, and yeah. they are getting right. by with radical. I mean, it's government 
advocated and imposed conservation measures, but that's what we have to have. Yeah, right. And it's working. It's working yeah. it's immediately. I mean, in the extreme short term. We don't have to sacrifice that much because, right. like, the City University of New York City did a, um, a solar map of the rooftops in New York, and they said we could have forty percent of our peak air conditioned time power mm -hmm. from our rooftop solar. And under the East River, there are now rotors that are providing from the tides electric power to Roosevelt Island, and they, they're going to put in more. They studied it, uh, they did an environmental impact statement to make sure it wasn't killing too many fish, even though Indian Point kills like 30 billion fish mm -hmm. a year. Nobody's, mm -hmm. you know, but here they were so careful. Yeah. Are there any comparative figures between energy use in Japan and energy use here per capita? Anything oh, I, like that. I think Rocky Mountain Institute has those. Uh, really? Yeah. Amory Lovins is yes. great on yeah. all this stuff. I have another question on cancer statistics. I Connecticut and Stern classes. Uh, the, the state of Connecticut stopped doing uh, cancer registry, registry by. Uh, County or whatever. I didn't know that. The, the Connecticut Cancer Registry was the first, and it was of great historical importance in epidemiology. Well, I never heard that. It was in Yale. It, in this book that I read, it said they suspended those, and I'm wondering, is that going on everywhere? Or um, I think I, I heard in New York that they are. I think it's hard to believe the states yeah. uh, oh, I, th I think you as they say in journalism okay. school check it out you know no, I would I'll look it up I'll especially if it's journalism I'll, I'll back I'll, I'll back you up on that I know I read the very same thing not in particular with regard to Connecticut but a nationwide cancer registry after Three Mile Island within a year of it was suspended to some degree and oh, the same thing is yeah so the same thing is happening with radiation monitoring of the plume from Japan, which is still reaching right, us. Right, EPA but, shut uh, down the radiation. EPA, the NRC, cut way back to the normal monitoring, which is milk every 30 days and the water every 90 days. So yeah. they don't want they're, to know, and they're not going to look. Yeah, that way there won't, won't See, be any problem. Not, I mean, the cancer registry isn't going to tell you what caused the cancer. No, but so it has to. The purpose of them is really what kinds of cancers and how many. And even, then even a child no, who that's still a you are geographically a So you get the reports, then your, your <laughs> analysts. Yeah, but clusters. Germany concluded around three nuclear power plants right. that there was a right, uh, prior to being a birth to But you can't right. go to any one of those children's medical records exactly. and find exactly. any evidence of where the well, leukemia came like from. Normal. Well, you got to also these kind of things, like you said, like the precautionary principle, right? If you see that right. every, all these nuclear We know that it's happening. happening, we know it's happening to actual living, breathing right. children, and there's no way to identify right. those children. Yeah. You know? Oh. No, but you know. In a given case, if, some, if a child lived a mile from a nuclear power plant and got leukemia, I could not say with any no, confidence but that that's so that a hundred kids got it in three blocks and in another area of the same yeah. population right. nobody got but, it. And the, but the point is we're it dealing with small something. numbers so it might be that you would have predicted four kids and there are eight. That's a horrible increase but it's still a small number. But things were alarming enough for them to suspend these registries. Oh, that I don't know. No, I would check that in Germany that, yeah. it, was, that yes. it was more likely. The German study, definitely. I'm, I'm agreeing with yeah. you. But I'm still telling you that it's very small numbers. Is there you know, a network? You know, also, let me tell you a different, a different example. When I try, if I have a patient, a woman who smokes two cigarettes a day, and I try to get her to quit, I tell her, and it's true, that she's doubling her risk of a stroke by smoking two cigarettes a day. That's true. The risk is very small for somebody who smokes two cigarettes a right. day. But, but it's still double but what it would have been. why should a corporation making money subject us to any risk? Of course. Of course. Is when, there some especially kind of when there's alternative. Of course. Is there a network email or something? Well, did you get 
Did you get Nymph Launch? This is a really good network. Everybody should have Nymph Launch. I, I have a card. If you want to send me an email, I'll put you on my mail. Okay. Email. That's, a good, that's a good offer. Did you get Nymph Launch? I is that think, the name I of the website? Nymph Launch? The website um, is yeah. yeah. nymphwatchinfo.org. Send me an email and I'll put you on my list. Do you do any teachings at this is so exciting. We're going to have a teaching on March 30th for Occupy Wall Street, the environmental group and the anti-war group, like my talk, the connection between weapons and... Uh, because once once he gets in there, sometimes it gets, it gets in mainstream. I mean, it's because they, they start writing more things into their whatever they have resolutions or whatever, or, you know, whatever they have. So that's actually yeah, that's what people are talking about.